maybe. We're going to be talking about your balls today. It's going to be a bit of an uncomfortable topic for you. How do you... <laughs> She's going to give me kisses. Okay, just keep remembering those kisses as I go through this conversation. All right? Okay. Thank you, baby. Hi, everyone. Welcome back to our YouTube channel. So today's video, I thought I'd do... I get loads of comments about um, neutering and spaying and um, try to think of other words in other countries, castrating your dogs um, and about our puppy, Teddy, and what our plans are for him, um, about studying, breeding, all that kind of stuff. So I thought I'd just do a video kind of summarising my views on everything and where what we're going to do with our dogs. So Teddy is uh, almost a year old. His birthday is at the end of August. Um, so he can't be neutered yet. In this country, it depends on the breed of dog. Generally, the larger the dog, the later in life um, they get neutered or spayed because the later in life it takes for them to reach maturity. So for example, pet Teddy. For example, Teddy is not due to finish adult... Uh, to reach adulthood to come off his puppy food um, and to have finished growing until he's 18 months old so the vets here don't recommend that you neuter until he is at least 18 months old um so we wouldn't be doing that but for that period of time anyway because we wouldn't want to do anything that could impact his growth obviously we want him to be as big as possible um and as tall as possible so yeah we won't be neutering before that mark Having said that, at the moment, he's entered into the humping phase, which is so annoying. Um, he doesn't do it to Nico because I think because she's alpha and she asserts herself, Nico actually humps Teddy, which is a bit odd. Um, but he has started doing it to Phil. Um, and at one point he did it to other dogs, like Major, but now he doesn't do it to other dogs. It's just Phil, which is weird in itself. Um, but that's probably the only, like issue at the moment without neutering him that would make me want to get it done is just to try and put an, an end to that and then secondly when he's off lead he runs around a lot more he runs away a lot more because he's got that drive to do so when you new to them they kind of mellow out completely um so yeah that would be nice to have but at the same time i'm not gonna i, I can wait another it's not even a year another six seven months to do it that's fine um, but the reason I'm not going to be doing it or going to try and not do it because I really don't want to is um, because I would like to try and get into dog shows um, like Crufts. Um, I think you have to go through a lot of dog shows before you reach Crufts level. Um, but my breeder, where Teddy came from, is a show dog owner. So he comes from a line of champions. Uh, Phil does too, actually. And I, the breeder that I got Teddy from, I'm still really, really close with. We still speak weekly, but she's offered to take me to a few shows with her and with Teddy's brother from the same litter. So they can kind of compete against each other in the friendliest possible way. And she's going to try and help me into... Oh, let me sort this out. She's going to help me in the show dog circuit because it's kind of a bit of a niche world from what I hear. And it can be um, quite difficult. Like people are quite competitive and things like that. And... I'm not into all that drama, but I would just like to know what an unbiased person that really knows the breed and understands the breed, what they think of him. Because I think he is the most stunning, beautifully handsome doggy. And who knows? Like, I'd rather get a stranger's opinion that is trained in Alaska Malamutes, you know, to judge and see what, what, what he's like. And also, I just think it's something different. Like, why, you know, don't hold him back. I want him to see what he's, his potential is. Um... And maybe one day stud him out, but I don't know about that. Um, if I did, I'd probably only do it with Teddy's breeder and people in her circle, because I just like their um, ethos. I think that's the word I'm trying to think of, you know, the way that they police who is going to get a puppy and the support they give afterwards to ensure that those puppies don't ever end up in rescues, things like that. Um, the amount of like stuff she went through with us to ensure that, you know, we knew what we were getting into, the amount of meetings we had to go through just to be on her reserve list for a puppy, um, the amount of visits we had to do with her, all of that sort of stuff. That's the right kind of breeder. And I would want, if Teddy were to ever become a stud, I would want, because I, I do want to ensure continuity of the breed and I am not against, what's the word? I'm, I'm pro rescue, but I'm also pro, if you want to go buy a puppy, you buy a puppy if you're committed enough and you know that that puppy isn't going to end up in rescue. That is, I know it's, um, it contradicts a lot of people that say you should do a rescue, but, um, I don't, I haven't rescued any of mine. I've bought all of mine and I'm not ashamed to say that. All of mine have an excellent home and I got the exact breed and the exact age that I wanted. Um, so yeah, I would consider studying. Um, but obviously, Teddy couldn't stud with her anyway because that's his mum and his sister. 
Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm not huge on that. It's more so I want to enter the dog show ring. Oh, look at him there. How could he not win? Just wait. I think we're going to one in August and we'll see how we get on. Literally don't have a clue what I'm doing in that element. Um, so my other option. So this is the, the whole point of this video, actually, is um, what we can... Teddy. So the other option, anyway, the, the, the purpose of this video, Tedster, is to talk about your alternatives to neutering. And that's called something called chemical castration, which I didn't know about until about 12 months ago. And I'm not sure a lot of people do. So did you know that you don't have to permanently neuter your dog? You don't have to take their balls away or, or it only exists to my knowledge for boy dogs, not for females. But what you can do is get an implant like a microchip. It's called chemical castration and they come in doses of either six months or 12 months. It's a lot more expensive than neutering. I think for neutering in the UK, it costs about £200 for a dog, roughly. For chemical castration, which is this implant, for a six-month or a 12-month dose, I think it's about the same as getting them neutered. So that's a yearly cost that you'd keep having to pay. But the point of it is that within that period, either six or 12 months, after that, they're back to normal again. So you get the behavioural benefits of the neutering without the permanent decision. And I think at the very least, I would start with chemical castration because that then gives me the option to plan his periods. For example, if I went six months, I'd do that in the winter. And then in the summer, when the shows are on, he can be uh, uncastrated. So I can keep doing that. And then I get the behavioural benefits for the winter and I can still get to show him in the summer. So that is my plan so far. I'm going to do chemical castration at 18 months um, and get an implant put into him. Um, and I'll do that for a six month period. We're going to do some shows. Um, and as soon as COVID allows all of that, I think we're going to start them this year. Um, and yeah, and we'll see from there. I'm not against neutering. I'll probably get him done in a few years time, but I just don't see that there's any rush to do that, especially if I can chemically castrate him. Um, and I can obviously afford the yearly cost to do that and make that decision as opposed to just getting it completely operated on and taken away. And then my options are open, I guess, to what I want to decide in the future. I think my biggest regret is I would have liked to have a fill puppy, you know, instead of shopping for Teddy when I needed to. The option to have gone to another person and said, can you breed with my dog and let me have one of the puppies so that I've got their sibling as they grow older. If you think Phil's eight now, Teddy, and the average life expectancy is 12 to 14 years, the assumption would be that Teddy will be around a lot longer than Phil, who's eight years younger. So the idea of being able to continue the breed of your of your dog with another dog eight years down the line, because I'm always going to have manly moots, I think, that's something really big to me and I would love to be able to have that option. And I do regret not being able to have that option with Phil um, or even Nico. Um, but at the same time, the difference, I think, between Phil and Nico is I am not mature enough to be a breeder. I support breeders. I support rescues keep needing to put that in there because I know people will come for me um but I wouldn't I, I couldn't give up puppies <laughs> I if it weren't for Shane I would have a lot more dogs than three I would have too many that I could possibly walk um and yeah if I had a litter of say six dogs I wouldn't be able to decide which one of those I would want to keep and I would end up keeping all six and my lifestyle cannot maintain six dogs it can barely maintain three dogs with my job with my baby and everything else so I know for me it would cause me too much pain to put Nico through a pregnancy when I personally hated being pregnant myself when I had my child and then passing puppies over and I know it's completely what's the word like hypocritical to say that because I've done that I've taken a puppy away from its mum but it's different for me it's different to take a puppy and, and bond with that puppy and become their mum than it is to own the mum and watch the puppies go away even though I support other breeders doing it, I just don't have the mental capacity to do that. I think I'd become very, very depressed if I was that person. Um, and I know I know that sounds so hypocritical and I know I'm going to get some judgment, but that's the reason I wouldn't breed a girl dog. I would rather be the stud dog owner that isn't involved in the pregnancy, the delivery, the potential loss of pups, because that happens a lot, you know, the amount of pups that don't survive to full term. Um, all of that kind of stuff, I can be away from it um and not part of that and that would be better for my personal mental health um but yeah that is a 
That was a long a justification for what we're doing with Teddy, wasn't it? Um, but yeah, that is my thought processes on it all. We get loads of questions about little Tedster and what's happening with him. But the long and short of it is we can't do anything until he's 18 months old. He's not even a year yet. When we do, it will be chemical castration for, I would say, at least the first year. And then we'll decide what happens after that. And they are our plan so far. Um, and uh, I don't really know any guides or anything that you can go to for this, but just speak to your vet. I know my local vet didn't offer the chemical castration. So I found another one. I called around and found other vets that did do it. And then they do quiz you on why you want it. Um, like, and, and they really try to promote the normal castration. Um, but eventually, once you've explained what your reasons are, like, for example, mine was I want to get into show dogs and I might want to study them out in the future. Um, they're fine with it. They just want to know if you want a six or a 12 month. Um, oh. <laughs> anyway, that is everything from us. Thank you guys so much for watching and we'll see you in the next video. Bye, everyone.